Right. Thank you so much for joining me. Now we're going to get into the details of what it means to scale out across the organization using the Kanban method. So just a reminder for the folks who've been taking this uh, information in so far, uh, we're looking at identifying services. We have to do that in a very thoughtful manner. Uh, there's no need to come up with a grand plan. And we're about to get into a little bit more what that looks like. But uh, we've had some people before tell us, well, you need a big plan. You got to have everything organized to figure out how to do this across your business. Uh, we tend to find that's overly optimizing some of the planning. So when we're looking into building out Kanban across the enterprise, what we're looking at is tackling one service at a time. And believe me, the pain is out there. It'll scream like crazy. And people will say, we need to tackle this problem over here and this problem over here. Uh, and that's kind of how we look at scaling out in some cases. Other times, it can be just a simple, logical way of saying, let's focus on this over here, build out a service over here, and then gently move over to another place when the time is right. It depends on the organizational's culture, their values, and what kind of outcomes they're looking for. Now, when we're scaling, just remember, you've probably heard about the static thing, right? We're looking at using static for each system and then ultimately building out a service on top of that. So scaling out in a service-oriented fashion one service at a time is the key to this. We don't look at it as some grand plan. And when we're doing this, we actually do it with static. So remember, uh, it's very common uh, to have executives go, well, this is copy paste because they've had a lot of other agile approaches. Say you do the same thing over and over again across your organization. We don't approach it that way. I could go on to tangents about how that's not what we do, but the key fact is you can have two different groups of individuals, uh, both operating separate systems, and they could both be doing software development. But the reality is the composition of those teams, the composition of their demand will be completely different or slightly different. And even that slight difference will cause them to evolve and change their systems. You want them to have that kind of autonomy. You do not want to do some kind of copy and paste approach. Uh, I recently had a large uh, client tell me from the CTO level, they said, this is just going to be a to do doing done kind of thing. And I said, uh, I will not do that. Uh, so they, we, we became a little bit of frenemies at times. We rubbed elbows a little bit. Uh, but what became obvious was uh, they had this very fixated mindset of a low cost economical delivery of uh, agility in their business. But the problem was they weren't really evolving. They weren't really becoming agile. And if you look at the data behind this company, they were using a different approach in which they did batch delivery and every single batch looked perfect. And I, I dug in the data and I asked them, one of their colleagues, why is this the case? Why does everything look so clean? Why does everything equal out to 100% delivery every time? And they said, well, basically, we just chop off what we didn't do, move it into the next cycle of batched work, and we call it done from there and say that we've succeeded. So that's kind of the result of doing something where it is a grand plan and it is done in sort of this copy-paste approach. So when we're looking at Kanban, what we're saying is we're using static, and static has a few key steps. I think you might remember this. If you don't, let's just briefly touch on that. We're looking for sources of dissatisfaction. Why are we even doing this? Why does it even matter to us? I can't tell you how many times I've been in organizations where they've said, let's just do this grand plan, and people just start to ignore the plan the minute it's announced. If you do the sources of dissatisfaction practice, you're going to find that there's motivation right there to improve, some pain to address and resolve from the end users. I mean, not end users, I mean the uh, system level side where people who work inside the organization, inside the team are going to say, we really could change here and we can make that change happen. From there, we get into the demand analysis. We get into the uh, capability analysis. It starts to build out what kind of work they're dealing with. What's the pattern of that work, the demand pattern, how well are they supplying that demand with their capability? And then from there, kind of digging into the workflow and then getting into the policies of how this thing should be put together and ultimately the Kanban design itself. And that's just for one system. You take those systems, you put them together and you find that you have a real customer connected maybe to more than one system and that creates the service. And so when we're looking at managing services, managing systems, what we really are paying attention to are the customer satisfaction and how healthy these systems are, how stable they are, how customer oriented they are, and then from there, how survivable they are inside a business. This all depends on what we're doing with Kanban and how we wanna go with it. But ultimately, there's typically a pain point somewhere that really starts the conversation to use Kanban, and then from there, it evolves out inside the business. Um, now, the last piece of this is managing these systems, managing these services really comes down to using the Kanban cadences. And we'll get into more what that looks like later. But the highlight of this is we have something called an operations review. 
So you see all these dots here on the screen to my right, uh, to your right, actually, you will notice how they all are different organizational areas from sales to marketing to uh, customer care. It all depends uh, what's the area of focus and what they're trying to do inside the business. Now, the cadences are really meant to help see how these things are operating. Are they operating in a good, balanced nature? Now, if you remember from your uh, prior information, possibly, you might have gotten some information around metrics for Kanban systems. This really digs into, uh, are they stable? Are they operating in a reliable way? Or do they have a lot of variability that needs attention? Now, in the cadences, we have the operations cadences to kind of indicate which ones are doing well, which ones might need more support. Uh, also, what kind of demand is coming at us that maybe causes us to recalibrate some of these services or ask them to change how they operate. Now, on the flip side of this, you can see some services might be red. For example, imagine one of these dots is actually a red dot, and that indicates that it's got a lot of risk, a lot of delay, and we have a meeting called the risk review meeting. And that really is to say across the board and also within individual systems or services, is something on fire here? Do we need to pay attention? Do we need to actually address a problem locally within a given service? Or is there something across multiple services? Imagine more than one dot being read. Well, at that point, then we have a need to, to dig in and see what the common pattern problem is and address it right there. So what we're trying to do is develop really a good, sustainable, survivable, customer-oriented business that has all these services connected. Now, here's a quick visualization of how that works. Imagine that IT is the problem, and I'm being very simplistic here. Obviously, IT is going to be way more complex than most organizations, but for simplistic descriptions here, we're just going to provide you with a little circle that says IT. Now, imagine IT starts to stabilize itself, and it starts to reach out to its internal customers, vendor management, marketing, legal, human resources, and it starts to provide them with better quality of service, and they start to say, can we get a little bit of what you're doing in our environment? And so that evolves into developing more than one system, more than one service, really. And you can see this interrelationship here in this diagram of how finance has customers, but also finance might also have uh, dependent services. Another example might be uh, where IT here has multiple customers that it serves. It serves vendor management, it serves marketing, sales, legal, human resources. Now, inside of these services are other uh, organizations that they depend on. It all depends on how you map this out in a Kanban environment. But you'll find that IT has customers that it's serving internally, but it also has dependencies in its own way. Dependencies that point to uh, internal to IT, uh, internal to the business, and maybe external to the business. Uh, it's a number of times that I've been working with IT organizations where I say, hey, how about X brand company or X brand service? And they all kind of shake their heads going, oh yeah, we've been there before. We always have problems with those guys. And I start to bring into the conversation this risk review meeting that we just talked about. And I mentioned to them how, uh, have they ever sat down at the table and said, what's your average amount of delay for this particular customer? I mean, this particular dependent service that you're working with. And usually it's an outside firm. And they say, we've never had a conversation discussing how long it takes for that outside firm to give us what we need. And I sit there going, well, guys, well, let's play with that right now. Let's kind of model this right now. Let's imagine what this looks like. Do you have a sense of what the contract says for that outside um, company? Uh, provider. And they go, no. And I said, well, okay, imagine it's 15 business days for them to turn something around for you. Uh, what do you think the average is right now? And they usually say, oh, it's like 45, if not 90 days. Wow. So you haven't had a conversation yet about whether or not they're meeting their contractual agreement. You're just simply just going along day to day and not trying to improve something. And they go, we never thought of that. So now they start to realize they can work together as a business to start to solve some outside dependency issues. That's just one example of some of the power that comes from using the Kanban cadences. So let's dive into this a little bit further. How do you scale this inside a business? Because you can go multiple different ways. There's no one wrong or right way to do Kanban inside a business. There are a few key options here that we want to discuss. Now, one option is you can go horizontally from the width of the, the actual value stream. Uh, one organization I recently worked with had a uh, a COBOL team, they had uh, a new web development team, all kind of blended together. And they formed the middle of that little width diagram right there. They were the ones providing a service to multiple agencies inside their business. Uh, and they realized after a little bit of time, I'd say only about maybe six weeks of time that they needed to go left. And that means go upstream in this case, up to the value stream closer to the customer. And they started realizing that what the customer was giving them was very simplistic requirements, very simplistic requests, and that more information was really needed to make it smoother. Because the result of that 
not having good requirements, not having a good cadence for requirements even, led to them struggling where they went through a, a, a starving and then a feasting kind of model inside their Kanban system. So that taught them right there, we don't want this kind of variability in our system. What we want to be able to do is have a good, smooth, reasonably flowing amount of demand. So let's go left, let's go upstream, let's get this stuff organized. And now they're doing that right now, building out their value stream, touching on their, their customer representative, basically, trying to figure out what they need in a more effective pattern of, of management. Now, if you go further beyond that, you're probably reaching their real true customer. So you can see how this automatically kind of brings them into that perspective of going from one of sustainability to one of service orientation. It's really cool. Now, they could go further downstream. Let's just say that this group of people had a different team that helped them out in getting their software changes out. Well, if that's the case, they may say, we don't really have a good relationship with this team and we're kind of dependent on them like a lot of other teams. So they may start to develop a relationship that's more refined, more fine-tuned, more sequenced in a way that really provides a greater sense of reliability for getting software out the door. In past roles where I've worked um, in government agencies, for example, this is a common problem. And it's, it's kind of a joke because the group that does the releases of the software will say, hey, look, we can do this for you three weeks flat every time. And kind of like what we've covered in the Kanban method and historical knowledge of it, um, with the XIT case study, for example, the same problem pops up, the sort of low time frame where they release software every three days suddenly, and then they release software every six months. This high amount of variability was not reliable for us. So we started having uh, conversations with them and engaging with them to really pull apart their system and help them figure out what they were really doing. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't around long enough to see that come to fruition, but I have a feeling that over time, they were evolving into effectively their own little Kanban system to tie into our service. That was a really cool thing that was developing right before I left. Now, you can also dive deeper into your, your system. You can go further down vertically. And that's something to be thinking about. Um, as you go deeper into your Kanban system, you're going to find that you can get further into identifying subsystems or subservices that you rely on from your value stream perspective. This is really great because from there you can balance and flow across the network. You can really get some good, uh, solid delivery that way. Now, on the flip side, you can go higher. You can get higher levels of granularity. Uh, so imagine this being like uh, the value stream ticket right here, and this is a particular higher level feature that we're trying to get out the door for a customer. It's part of a larger subset of features that go to the customer. And ultimately, there's a strategic goal of reaching a number of segments or one, sorry, one particular segment of customers. So that's one example of, of how you can do that. Now, this is kind of how it looks as you connect it together in a visual way. You could have a request come in from the customer, like the example I gave you earlier. And that can lead to an actual, actual need, but it can also be a goal, a strategic goal that says we're going to address this particular segment and we're going to provide this kind of quality of features or services. Once that's approved and once the company says, let's go for it, they've made a commitment to the customer. Now additional demand comes down to these other services that are responsible for supporting this larger service. And you can see how that cascades down again to another level of service request uh, for this lower level service. So you can see how this starts to orchestrate itself together in a sequence of services or a sequence of systems uh, connecting together quite well. This allows for a lot better discussions around sacrifice, around priority. In this case, if we're trying to grow up a little bit further, we'll probably talk about sequencing, scheduling, uh, selecting, and ultimately delivering something of value to the customer. It's a bigger, more mature conversation. And that's kind of the thing I like about Kanban. I should mention this briefly. Uh, I like it because it has uh, grown-ups having grown-up conversations, ultimately. As you get into this more, you'll realize that the context for how you really operate starts to surface and you can really have good, informed conversations around how all of these systems connect together and not be kind of fighting internally, but really focusing on the customer and saying, how do we make the right decisions for the customer's needs? It's really great that way. So let's move over to uh, organizational improvements. What will happen is they bubble up. Uh, the pain that's there starts to become more and more obvious. And that's where the review meetings tend to kick in and really show you how this works, how this comes together. But for example, we were talking about this earlier, you have the operations review meeting. When we're looking at operations review, what we are really trying to say is, are we delivering according to expectations? Do we have problems that are showing up? And do we have variability that's really kicking us in the butt? 
So when we're looking at probability, uh, I'm not probably, sorry, variability, when we're looking at variability, what we're looking for are special cause kind of variability and common cause kind of variability. Now we get into this later on with our materials and our training, but when we're looking at that, that special cause piece, what we're looking for are like trees that fell out in the dark and we go, wait a minute, we need to, to address this because this is a weird one-time thing. Whereas we might have more of a common pattern of delay where it's just due to load, right? Due to demand. And that's kind of like traffic uh, that's all jammed up on the street for you. There are different ways to manage this and mitigate this, but that really shows up as a city kind of map, right? When we're looking at operations review, we're looking at the sort of bigger picture of different services, different uh, entities coming together and where some of them are operating well and where some of them are not operating well. And the goal of this meeting is really to try and pick that apart and improve the overall business. So uh, it's, it's a cadence that happens usually about once a month. Uh, another one that shows up is that risk review meeting, which is really where are the fires? Where are things really slowing down? Where are the holes in the ground, so to speak? And we're looking at different services, trying to identify if there's a pattern across them or individual services that show up more frequently with common issues uh, inside their own system. So this is a really interesting topic to get into. But when we're looking at scaling Kanban, you find that these conversations are superbly good because what happens is you build one system, you don't really have much of a conversation. You build another system, you start to have more of a conversation because now you have two to talk about. As you build out more and more systems or you build out an entire service, there's a lot to talk about there. And it's in a way that's a common language. So I don't think people quite catch this a whole lot. It's an effect that happens when you use Kanban. If you remember from your, from your other uh, training and other knowledge here, we start talking about lead time. We start talking about throughput, blockers, frequency of blockers. Those are the risks versus the, the flow of the system in some ways. And that becomes the lingua franca of the environment. Now, someone in sales can say, this is how long it takes us to get stuff done. Uh, these are the kind of things that we try to do and deliver. On the flip side, IT can say, these are the kind of things that we try to do. And here's how long an average it takes those things to get done. Uh, suddenly we start to have apples to apples kind of conversations. We know we're dealing with oranges underneath this and they're not the same oranges. Let's just say one's an orange and one's a pear. But at the top above that, they are the same kind of apples as far as measurement is concerned. And that provides a common language for understanding and for empathy, as well as for a general understanding of whether or not we're fit for the customer's needs. So this is huge stuff. It really does open up a bigger dialogue in the business where culturally, suddenly there's some commonality that exists. So those are just a few examples of, of the Kanban scaling and how it actually works culturally in some ways inside of business. Uh, I hope this helps you out. Feel free to ask me questions.